Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're going to write our hello world to SDL from scratch so you can see all the commands and what they're doing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, if you don't have SDL already up and running, make sure you check out my playlist. You can search my name here or courses.msha.io. Scroll down here, you'll find the SDL3 series. Either way, you will find these SDL videos to make sure that you have it installed and running from our test program there. But what we want to do here is write hello world here. And I'm going to keep the wiki up here just so we can go ahead and see how SDL works. And I'll explain the functions as we go along here. I think the complete API uh, index is probably going to be most helpful here as we uh, search for different functions here. And the first function I'm going to search for is SDL init. This initializes the SDL library. Now, on occasion, if you don't do this as the very first thing, you might get segmentation faults in your SDL library uh, function calls that you call later. Um, so again, you know, we're going to be writing most of our most of our program here just in main, and the next several tutorial videos will also be like that. But uh, as you add abstraction, again, make sure that you initialize SDL first. If you're getting weird uh, segmentation. Uh, faults on function calls that otherwise look good. So again, initialize our subsystems here that we're going to use here. So SDL init, and it's basically going to return a true or false value whether this works. Okay, so what are the subsystems that we can initialize here? Well, let's look at the flags here. Uh, and if I scroll down here, or I can actually see the flags here in the uh, the, the different uh, type defs here or, or defines here for audio, video, joystick, haptic, gamepad, events, sensor, camera. Uh, these are the different subsystems that I can enable. And I only pay for the ones that I enable, so to speak here, or as far as I'm aware, that's how that should work. Um, we're primarily going to be working with uh, video. So let's just go ahead and do SDL init. Uh, I'll go ahead and paste it in. That's a little bit safer video. Uh, but if you do want to use audio, you do SDL init audio. And again, the same rules apply per system that I want to initialize before I use any of the audio functions, I should initialize it. Okay. Uh, so we'll stick to video for now. Uh, let's just go ahead and compile this. Uh, I'll go ahead and use the compile command that I have here. I'll run it, it runs, no segmentation faults or anything weird here. Uh, so this seems good to me. Now, um, we probably should add a little bit of error checking here. Uh, and we could do like a return exit failure or something like that here. And, you know, SDL log is probably the preferred thing to do. Uh, let's just say failed, um, you know, something like that. Um, and, well, let's see here. This is going to turn true or false here. So it's probably not initialized. Okay. So if it didn't work here, uh, oh, I guess I don't have exit failure. Let's just return minus one. Uh, here so that we have a return code and it works okay now um, I'll try to be a good programmer but I won't always uh, let's say check for these errors but this is a nice thing that SDL does now it has a more consistent uh, syntax um, you know it's a C library but they've defined a bool here um, for us that we can use it uh, and again since I'm in C++ this is gonna work just fine here okay all right, so some other notes here. Let's go through the notes here. Um, anytime we initialize something, and we'll see this in the related functions, which is also helpful and usually a hint that you should be using them together, uh, we should quit, which cleans up all of our initialized systems here. So I'll do this towards the end here. Just call quit, and again, things work. Uh, should work just fine here. Okay, we're not doing anything interesting yet. Uh, so let's actually do something interesting. And what I'm going to look for here is the create window function here. Okay, that way we can get something popped up on our screen here. So SDL create window. And let's actually do that here. SDL create window. Uh, we'll see the parameters here. We need a title, a uh, width, height, and then some more flags here. And this is going to return a window structure for us. So let's say uh, Mike SDL3, uh, the width, you know, something reasonable here and then the uh, window flags. And again, I'm just going to explore the function parameters. They're always almost always hyperlinked here, which is nice here. Uh, let's make it resizable. I'm just going to copy this. And then again, this has a specific uh, code here. And you can kind of get an idea here uh, how the 
uh, defines work here, right? These are powers of two. So if you haven't done a bitwise or same, same rule anytime, almost anytime you see the flags here, I could put the uh, resizable window here and then I could or it with uh, whatever this thing is like, I don't know, hidden or occluded or borderless. Let's just put another one here. Let's see if our window will be borderless here. Um, so that that's the idea here. And because I'm oring these different bits that are at different positions, um, here, you know, different values, then I can uh, basically have multiple parameters set. Okay, this is kind of like a classic thing to do here. Um, and if it's set up properly, you can also use this um, such that like if I had SDL window open GL and some other flag or something, maybe they would cancel out, but you don't have to worry about that uh, so much here. Uh, but we just want to create our window. Now, when we create our window, we want to store a sort of pointer to this window structure here. So SDL window. Let's see if we can look at that uh, structure, SDL window. Uh, and again, you can always usually just type in the names here. Uh, okay, this is an opaque handle to a window. So, you know, basically we just want a pointer to it or something. Uh, I'm going to do this in two steps here. It doesn't really matter here. Um, but oftentimes, and eventually we'll want to abstract this so that we just have a window here uh, and we'll create our window. And uh, let's go ahead and compile this, see if we uh, made any mistakes. I'll run it. Uh, and it runs so fast, I didn't see my window here. So uh, I'm just going to use a SDL delay. Uh, let's do 5,000 milliseconds here. And since I'm showing you everything, SDL delay. Uh, you can do nanoseconds, SDL delay precise. Let's just do delay here, which does it in milliseconds. That will work uh, perfectly fine. I got to do a rebuild, rerun, and here it is here. Okay, I've got my borderless window that showed up. Uh, and apparently it's capturing uh, part of my recording software. Let's get rid of the borderless thing just so you can see that that was a window. Let's compile it and run it. And there we go. Mike SDL, you see that the title matches here. It's 320 by 240. Uh, and the contents of it are weird. It's just capturing video memory from somewhere. Uh, so as long as you see a window pop up for five seconds, you are golden. You have completed your hello world to SDL. All right, folks. So that's pretty much all I want to cover uh, for today here. Um, I mean, we can reduce this further here. I guess we also touched on SDL log here. Um, but again, if you have this much working, then you are in good shape uh, to continue moving forward. Now, next, we're going to want to talk about how to handle some events from the window and maybe start doing some interesting things. And again, we'll continue uh, going through the uh, documentation as you need. And again, the other note I will give you is as I'm showing you these lessons, make sure that you are also typing them in. And I also also encourage you as I show you commands to scroll to the bottom and see the C also if you're looking for ways to make your programs different than otherwise just following mine uh, exactly as I type. That'll help you experiment and learn the API. All right, folks, so there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that lesson. And thank you again for your time and attention. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.